listen to see people With their heads up to the sky still Cause honestly for the same people Life can be so real I'm amazed by all your strength I am And I'm grateful you come through yeah. So I take this time to stop a moment And show my gratitude What's up, what's up? The Grace Tour in the Carolinas. That's right, we're here in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina, and we're excited to see what God has in store. Now this trip here is gonna be a little different. Most missions we go to, when we hit a city, there are group homes, homeless shelters, detention centers, schools that we go to that we have set up ahead of time. But this one here, like nothing was working out. And granted, it was a last minute mission. Like everybody was like, maybe next time, maybe next time. So I'm like, surely, God has a plan for us here in the Raleigh Durham area. So I don't know what the Holy Ghost about to do, but we about to let him lead and we about to go out here and we about to touch and bless God's people. It's your Fort Next Level B, man, and I'm thankful. Thankful, thankful to be on this great tour especially. Today we finna go just really find somebody that we can just bless, you know, just somebody at random, whoever the Lord tell us to. I don't even know where we're going, to tell you the truth. We normally go to a school or two, but today we don't have any schools. So you know what that means? That means that we are following wherever God leads. So check this out. So we meet, you know, we here in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina, about to do the work. And we meet as a team. We have our morning worship, how we always do, because we want to be led by the Spirit of God. The Bible makes it clearly, not to thine own understanding. So we have in worship, we talk and we pray and we share in ideas. And it was a common consensus amongst the team that God is calling us to go out here and just do something fresh, organic, not structured, and let his spirit lead. So our homeboy Felix, who we staying with, he just happened to have like a whole bunch of tables and chairs. So we said, man, we about to get some tables and chairs. We about to hit a park. We about to feed a bunch of homeless people. We about to preach the gospel. We about to have our own makeshift church service right here in the park downtown Raleigh. Went there, found the park, found the homeless people, but we ran into this lady at the downtown rescue mission. And she like, you can't be out here preaching. She like, you can't be out here sharing the gospel and feeding people. She's like, I believe in Jesus too, but this is illegal. And so we struggling as a team because we ain't trying to break no laws. But Acts 4, 18 and 19 makes it clear. The disciples got arrested, came back out, preached the gospel back and forth. And the people are like, hey, bro, we told y'all stop preaching. And look what Peter said. He said, hey, what's better? What's better in God's eyes for us to listen to you or for us to listen to him? So me and the team, we made a decision as the grace tour to listen to God and we hit the streets. We came all the way here to tell you don't give up. Don't nobody pay us to be here right now. We, listen to me, we had worship as a team this morning. We sat down, we read, we prayed, and we began to swap ideas like, God, what you want us to do? We in Raleigh, North Carolina, we got some churches lined up this weekend, but surely it's some people in the city you want us to touch. So, you know, being the rebels that we are, we wasn't hearing about, no, not you can't feed people or you can't come and do such and such. We wouldn't did it anyway. Um, went to Little Caesars, caught about 13 boxes of pieces, uh, enough to feed like 13 people. Went back, had drinks and everything, had our table set up, set up the chairs and everything. Went around gathering everybody, had them come over, and was all too happy to break the law for the right reason. You know, because people need that. I can't tell you to come listen to what I got to say and be positive and try to give you a message that hopefully impacts your life if I don't supply the need that you got right now. I pray that you get plugged into the source that's got unlimited resources. And I'm talking about God because Jesus is the plug to God. He made a way for you all when he died for us on the cross 2,000 something years ago. Plug into what you need in order to be successful. Detach from anything that drains your battery cell, and I promise I'll see you on that next level in life. Listen to me, this ain't no story, my brothers and sisters. This is real life. Christ came here and died for your sins, and died for my sins, and he said, I'm coming back again, if you just believe. God wants to tell you that you are valuable because you are. The reason why God woke us all up this morning is because there's something on this planet that we have to do. You know, yesterday turned out to be pretty amazing. You know, the world thought that they were gonna tell us no, 
But when God said yes, we went with it. We knocked it out. We ministered to people. And hey, I was feeling like a real beast. Like, you know, these are the disciples. We're here doing God's work. And it just blessed my soul to be able to bless other people. So today we have church. I'm excited. I'm feeling kind of heavy today, but I know it's only because God has a work for us to do. How dare we come into the house of God after crying and begging God for things all week and then sit like he has done nothing for us. You thought I was worth saving. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life so I can be free, so I can be whole, so I can tell everyone I know. You thought I was worth the same. So you came. But right now, let's just talk about the enemy trying to take your praise. Like some of you gonna get a breakthrough that's gonna shift your life when you just get up off your behind and just say, God, Lord, you are good and your mercies endure forever. Why? Because the word of God says that he inhabits the praise of his people. That means he comes inside you. Come on, am I talking to anybody? He dwells inside you. And so I wanna encourage you, my brothers and sisters. God's about to do something special in your life. All you gotta do is surrender. And that's what the disciples did up in that upper room. They was praying and begging and pleading for the Holy Spirit. And sometimes, Pastor, I find myself doing the same thing. I be begging God for the Spirit. Like, I know I messed up this week. I'm sure I did something goofy, my bad. I know I'm selfish. Just please give me your Spirit, because if I try to operate outside of your Spirit, I am so whack. I need your Spirit. Because I know with his Spirit, ooh. Listen to me, it ain't nothing God can't do with his spirit. So I look at the scriptures and I see, they said, don't be preaching. And they said something that was so deep. They said, how can we not? I mean, Peter, man, they so smooth. They said, ask for us. I don't know which one said that. It said Peter and John replied. So I don't know if they were talking in sync or what. But they said, ask for us. And you know what, watch this. When you in the spirit, you in sync like that. When you in the spirit, you in one accord. It's one voice, it's one God, amen? amen? Homeboy said, ask for us. We cannot help speaking about what we have seen and what we have heard. They're talking about an experience with Jesus. They're talking about experiencing the power of Jesus. And so what we have to do, my brothers and sisters, is when we experience the power of Jesus, it is time for us then to testify. Today we had the privilege of experiencing the Grace Tour and it was a phenomenal ministry. Um, we just wrapped up here in Durham at Emmanuel Temple. I'm the pastor here and this ministry is so relevant and so needed at this particular time in, in our history. Um, uh, we're experiencing that, that time where we're losing a lot of our youth and our young adults and to see the experience that our youth and young adults had today, to see them giving themselves back to Christ, to see so many uh, making decisions for baptism or rebaptism, uh, is transforming for us. So when I leave here, I don't care if you don't remember my face, my name, even what I just told you. All you need to remember is that God has something for you to do. Amen. And whatever it is, clean it up so that God can send you on your way to do his will. I'm just excited to see what the Grace Tour is going to do next um, and, and just to see how God is going to continue to lead them and continue to stretch uh, this ministry and stretch what they're doing all for the kingdom of God. And I'm just glad that we were able uh, to be a part of it today. Check it out. Yeah, I love God. You love God? What's wrong with you? I love God. You love God? What's wrong with you?
We just wanted to come by and encourage you this morning. Everybody up here, it's all good. We just wanted to come by and encourage you to tell you that God loves you. Not only does, does God love you, but we love you. We love you as his children. You were made in his image. Does everybody love God? Yeah. All right, that's what I like to hear. It's the last mission of the year, and we, uh, we're finishing it off right here in Atlanta. And it's bittersweet, bittersweet. Um, the sweet side first, we got a lot done this year. It's been a wonderful experience, a lot of growth, a lot of change. On the bitter side, you know, I just hate to see it all end, you know. Um, and looking forward to next year, though. It's not something that's going to stop, so um, I'm thinking for having my family here, my wife, and she has friends down here with us, and it's just a, it's just a special time, especially around the holidays, so we're just grateful. She's as Excited is an understatement. Today the Grace Tour dropped by First Lithonia, Seventh-day Adventist Church, and the Holy Spirit was thick from the very beginning. From the praise worship, through the testimonies, through the preaching of the Holy Word. I'll never forget, man, watching the, the Bible series um, that came out on NBC, and I think they did an amazing job, though it might not have been 100% accurate, you know what I'm saying? I'm just excited that people talking about the Bible and Jesus on TV. So let's just, let's just, I mean, let's count that as a win, okay? But I think that the writers did an amazing portrayal of the disciples. All throughout their walk with Jesus, and even after when Jesus was crucified, they were scared. And I must admit, I kind of felt a certain way. I felt like, man, why are they portraying the disciples as punks? Why are they portraying the disciples as scared? The disciples was bold. And God was like, yeah, son, they was bold, but the day of Pentecost ain't come yet. I said, oh, and I watched that episode, I don't know if it was six, seven, or eight, but I saw how they had the tongues of fire go around and fill the disciples, and they had this one scene where the disciples was walking down the street, and they was just walking with like a different type of swag. It was, it was weird. I'm just like, what? I'm like, look, like, like, they, they got the wind blowing through their hair, you know what I'm saying? But I'm like, yo, like, let's get them, Peter! You know what I'm saying? I'm excited, because that's how it is. Before we had the Holy Ghost, we weren't hitting on nothing. Extremely successful in sin. And when God was like, I'm done playing with you, I'm about to show you, you ain't running nothing. We all had to hit rock bottom. We all had to bottom out. But when the Holy Ghost came in the picture, it was different. We felt and experienced the power of God. This tour is definitely one that has been called to this world for such a time as this. Joel 2.28 was lived out in our presence today. Young men and women will prophesy, old men will dream dreams, and young men will see vision. We saw that today, and it was real. I'm encouraged that when Jesus came here, he ain't go and look for priests or scribes and Pharisees. He was like, no, nah, I want to find regular, everyday, messed up knuckleheads. Like, I want to work with them type of folk because I can mold them and shape them. They'll have a story to tell. And all we need to say is be accountable, people. Let's really live the life that we say that we do. Let's really serve the God we say we serve. Let's really preach to the people who need it to minister. This is a beautiful building, but you're the church all by yourself. Yeah.